my name is Kalela and welcome to my book talk. Today we'll be discussing There, There by Tommy Orange. I'm going to focus on the first half of this incredible novel and give you a few things to think about during your next book club discussion. This is a story of convergence. It's a story of different generations of Native Americans, all epicentered around Oakland, California. Decades and perhaps centuries or even millennia of history have led them to a powwow. So before we get too far in, I want to talk about the structure of this book. We notice right away that we have a prologue, which actually is an essay. And in the middle of this book, we have another essay, an interlude. And the essays are both really powerful and they're worth the discussion in and of themselves. Another interesting thing about this book is of course in the paperback version, we do have a cast of characters. We also have the book divided into sections. There's part one, part two, and part three. Think about how that functions. And of course the rest of the book is sectioned off into chapters that are each from the perspective of different characters. We have many repeating characters, but we also have some new characters who are added in. So think about how that works and why you think the author might have chosen to structure and organize the book this way. Let's consider the epigraph, an excerpt of a work by theater artist and poet Bertolt Brecht that begins the prologue and perhaps frames and maybe even foreshadows the novel. In the dark times, will there also be singing? Yes, there will also be singing about the dark times. Think about this when you finish the novel. So we're gonna to turn to page 17 from the perspective of Tony Loneman. And we're gonna look at the second paragraph on page 17. Now I'm using the paperback, but the hardback version roughly corresponds as far as page numbers. I'm starting from the third sentence in the second paragraph. The drome taught me to look past the first look people give you. Find that other one right behind it. All you gotta do is wait a second longer than you normally do and you can catch it. You can see what they got in mind back there. So as you read from Tony's perspective, think about this. How are we seen? How are we not seen? How do we know ourselves from the answers to these questions? So another way to think of it is this how we're seen, how we see ourselves, the gaps and the convergences between the two. So when we think about how Tony sees himself, we can also think about the idea of a mask. The idea of masks actually comes up a lot in this novel um, and consider how a mask relates to Tony, how it relates to the other characters and how it relates to broader themes in this book. Of course, in this novel, we can think about the title we know that on page 38, Gertrude Stein talks about a familiar experience to many of us, and that is the place where she grew up changing, her hometown changing. For me, that was Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know where it was for you, but it's worth thinking about. Bottom of page 38. The there there of her childhood, the there there was gone. There was no there there anymore. Think about changing the inflection of these two words and what it sounds like and what it could mean. There there. There, 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 there. And of course, there, there. A few other thoughts. Page 50, Opal, Viola, Victoria, Bear Shield has a teddy bear, two shoes, that talks. Think about what he has to say and how that relates to the book's prologue. Page 57, middle. The idea of sides, and in this case, sides of a physical space, where you have a mother on one side and her two daughters on the other side. How does this relate to larger and maybe even more urgent themes in the book, like sides of history? What side is history told from, taught from, recorded, considered important? What side are you on? Where are the convergences and the gaps between those two ideas? Page 101. The spider's web is a home and a trap. The character Jackie Redfeather is coming at this from a very real and non-theoretical perspective. 
But of course, spiders function throughout this novel, parts of spiders. And not only that, but we see spiders everywhere in so many indigenous cultures throughout the world, in myths, in stories, in tales, in spiritualities. Let's also think about the idea of a trap. Where else do we see this in the novel? Think about this particularly in reference to the interlude essay. Page 121, last paragraph. And so what Orville is, according to himself, standing in front of the mirror with his too small for him stolen regalia is dressed up like an Indian. In hides and ties, ribbons and feathers, boned breastplate and hunched shoulders, he stands, weak in the knees, a fake, a copy, a boy playing dress up. And yet, there's something there. Behind that stupid, glazed over stare, the one he so often gives his brothers, that critical, cruel look. Behind that, he can almost see it, which is why he keeps looking, keeps standing in front of the mirror. He's waiting for something true to appear before him, about him. So, Here's a question. Can being who you are mean being who you're not? Or can pretending to be someone you're not conversely be being who you really are? Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever worn your regalia all wrong? And this. Of course, birds and birdsong are significant in this book, but so are perhaps their opposite the idea of drones, drones like the object, and of course drones like the noise. Consider this and how the idea of drones and droning is used throughout the book. I won't go any further in this book for discussion, but do know that the novel shuttles towards a very dramatic and some might say surprising end. But is it really all that surprising? Have there been things in the book that prepare us for the ending all along? Consider, for instance, page 141, the bottom of the page. Something about it will make sense. The bullets have been coming for miles, years. Their sound will break the water in our bodies, tear sound itself, rip our lives in half. The tragedy of it will all be unspeakable. The fact we've been fighting for decades to be recognized as a present tense people, modern and relevant, alive only to die in the grass wearing feathers. Again, think about this as you finish the book. That's all I've got. But when you finish this book, turn back to the beginning as I've mentioned, but specifically also turn to page 20 where there, there, character Tony Loneman refers to a passage by author Louise Erdrich, who of course was, uh, is one of Tommy Orange's literary influences. Think about what this passage means in relationship to this book. And I wanna thank you for joining me for my very first book club talk of There There by Tommy Orange. I hope to see you again. We will be reading Washington Black next time, but for now, thanks so much for joining me for There There, and I hope you enjoyed the talk.